And I start by bringing you back uh, uh, more than 30 years ago, when uh, the ICGB was not conceived, about 10 years before that. And then bring you back in uh, California, and that was the time when uh, the University of uh, uh, California and the Stanford University people started to conceive uh, the idea that uh, DNA is the base of genetic information in all uh, living being on the planet. Uh, and so if this is the case, then you can take a piece of DNA and move uh, this piece of DNA from one organism to the other. That was the birth of genetic engineering. And, uh, and here we are in the early 70s. And uh, at the same time, there was a sort of rush to understand how the genetic information is transformed into proteins. And it was realized that uh, the genetic code is exactly the same. So the way that uh, a gene sequence uh, is transformed uh, into a sequ sequence of uh, amino acid to form a protein is uh, the same in uh, plants, uh, in birds, uh, in mammals, uh, and in microorganisms. And this is what we call now the universality of genetic code. Putting the two information together, it was very easy to think that if I take a, a fragment uh, of DNA of, from the human genes and I put this into bacteria, then bacteria will produce uh, that uh, protein. And uh, this uh, was uh, the uh, initially conceived and, and presented with this uh, famous paper in 1980 in, in Lancet, uh, in which uh, there was the first demonstration that uh, you can uh, produce uh, insulin starting uh, from uh, uh, a protein that is produced in bacteria. I, I studied in medical school in the early 80s, and uh, uh, so approximately at the same time, and we were uh, taught in medical school how you have to deal with patients with diabetes uh, who are injected with insulin producing cows, producing pigs, uh, and how to react, uh, how, how to avoid all the reactions, especially the immune reaction against proteins in uh, producing a completely different species, or having the possibility of having insulin to be injected in patients with insulin of human origin solved completely all these issues. You have exactly the same protein that you have produced in humans. So this was taken up by uh, Lilly at that time, and uh, 1982, insulin was the first product to uh, enter the market. Now there are millions of people worldwide that take this uh, insulin uh, produced uh, through recombinant uh, DNA technology, so recombinant uh, insulin uh, 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 daily for uh, their survival. And immediately after that, uh, there's been a rapid uh, uh, pace of growth of uh, the introduction of the, these recombinant gene products uh, in, uh, in the market, 1985, human growth hormone, alta interferon, 1986, uh, uh, tissue plasminogen activator to the soil cloth, 1986 too, erythropoietin, 87, uh, and gamma interferon, 89, and so on and so forth. Again, uh, the same time, in, this time in uh, UK, a scientist from Argentinian origin, immunologist, publishes uh, a, a very interesting paper that uh, was not appreciated so much at that time, which uh, was a paper that described the procedure to immortalize a cell that produces an antibody. Uh, uh, this paper was uh, immediately recognized by the scientific literature and was published in Nature, but was not appreciated uh, by, by the community, by the industry. Think that uh, the scientist who won the Nobel Prize for this discovery, his name was uh, Cesar Misten. Uh, he was a government employee, the, an, an employee of the uh, MRC working at Cambridge at that time. He applied uh, to, for uh, a patent. He asked uh, the, the, the UK government uh, to, for uh, the interest in filing a patent. Uh, after a few months uh, without any response, uh, he received a letter saying that uh, uh, the UK government doesn't see any interest uh, in uh, patenting a technology for the production of uh, antibody, all identical one each other, against uh, red blood cells from rabbits, because the proof of pro concept was to take rabbit red blood cells, uh, inject them in mice, and having antibody against rabbits. So it was not recognized that this was the birth of monoclonal antibodies. Well, now if you look uh, uh, what the situation is, there are over 350 biotechnological drugs that have now gained clinical approval and over four other 400 had entered clinical trials. The biotechnology products uh, account uh, or to almost 50% of the top 100 drugs this uh, last year 
by standard the poor estimations, and the monoclonal antibody market is 75 billion USD dollars. The interesting point is that uh, several of the original products, 1982 insulin, the first, have started progressively to go off patent, and so they can produce by as generics. And uh, obviously, uh, to produce generics uh, is of paramount interest to have uh, products that are at affordable prices and can have larger distributions than products that are uh, produced by single big pharmaceutical companies because they can be production plants in all the states. However, to produce a generic chemical drug is relatively simple because you have a, need a relatively simple chemical plant uh, a production facility and follow a recipe. Product, produ producing a generic drugs, which is a biological, so a recombinant protein or a monoclonal antibody, is much more difficult because uh, every batch is different uh, from condition to condition, from cell to cell, from strain to strain, from clone to clone. And so the whole field takes uh, the name of uh, biosimilars and requires a profound know-how to produce this. Uh, and this is uh, exactly what the ICGB have started doing in the last uh, 10 and so years and aims to do even more in the future to produce, uh, to generate know-how to be transferred to the pharmaceutical industry in its uh, member states.